The construction industry has been consolidating for a lot of years, and the question here is, is how that's working, how it will play out. And I think largely the consolidation in the industry has happened over the last 25 years or so. The industry is too fragmented to really truly consolidate it. It's a $1.2 trillion highly disaggregated industry. But what has happened uh, and what will continue to happen is what we call a bifurcation or a stratification of the industry so that you've got this movement toward a very large end of the industry and then you've got this corollary movement to a very small end of the industry and what's become more scarce is, is the mid-sized player. There are a number of drivers behind it. Um, one, of the, one of the big ones over, over this long period of time has been the inflow of what we call the internationalist into the U.S. market. Uh, those international companies have come from all over the world. Uh, the Europeans were probably some of the early entrants into the U.S. market, people from, from England, France, uh, Germany, the Netherlands. And they've come in engineering, and they've come in pure contracting, and they've come in construction materials. Those companies are very large compared to even the biggest U.S. companies. You know, the multinational uh, global players, I mean, they, they operate on the scale of our biggest companies. You know, the Floors and Bechtels or even the, the big public, what we call E&C, engineer constructors. Um, that's how, that's, that's very standard for lots of other parts of the world. Europe is you know, certainly notable uh, in that regard. So these are big corporations. They're multi-billion dollar. They're global footprint kinds of companies. And I think really one of the main things they bring more than, than anything is a form of intellectual capital that is very difficult for, you know, the sort of typical U.S. contractor to have on, on payroll. Um, big engineer constructors, maybe, uh, but even in the, in the sense, unless they're, unless they're global operators, and certainly many of them are, they don't have necessarily the same kind of uh, intellectual uh, capacity and I'm talking about people on payroll who can do things like public-private partnerships, figure out the financing, know how to put all that together. And the, those, that just takes a whole lot of payroll overhead that many U.S. companies, you know, they don't have the critical mass uh, to do it. So they bring things of that nature. They certainly bring different kinds of technologies. They bring a different viewpoint uh, uh, in terms of what the business should all be about. I frankly think that in the long run, they're going to do the U.S. construction industry a lot of favors. It will be painful, maybe in the short and intermediate term, for some companies um, having to deal with some of those changes. But the long-run implications of it should be quite good. I think the long-run positive implications for the U.S. market, frankly, come down to, to profitability and, and economic performance and the potential of this to be a much better industry, much better business that it, than it is. If you ever sit in a room listening to people describe what it's like to try to be in the construction business, for example, their whole lives, very few people, you know, say, "Boy, this was <laughs> this is what I thought I was signing up for," you know. And I, many of us say that about almost anything we do with our lives. So I don't want to to be um, overly dogmatic about that point, but. Frankly, it's a tough business in the U.S. The margins are very thin. The risk is very high. Everybody knows that. People that play the game know it quite well. But I think most of them would say it's not actually, uh, in many cases, is rational, uh, rationally balanced. The U.S. market compared to some place like Europe or many European markets, uh, you know, uh, Asia, India, other places, it, it is imbalanced. And... Um, you know, when your mother told you as a kid or your parents told you life's not fair, they, they weren't kidding. Um, but these other global companies operate in markets where the margins are much better. The, uh, the way many of these markets, and I just go back to Europe as an example, operate is, you, is it's much like what you see happening slowly in the U.S. So you've got these giant multi-billion dollar companies, it's the smart money, and they're not they're not prone to do economically irrational things. They may, they may do some, you know, just like all companies, but they're, they're looking at the economics uh, of what they do very, very carefully. Different than sort of a, 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 an entrepreneurial, founder-created, early-stage 
contractor who isn't necessarily thinking everything through about the risk versus the, the rate of return. So uh, in the long run, I think if our marketplace were to be structured more like that, you, in effect, you have a better industry structure. You have a better industry structure, you have a better business potential.